If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. First of all, it's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Usually I use my computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard everywhere on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and there's a bunch more. You can make money also from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's pretty much everything I needed to start my first podcast. So, but why not just download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome to another episode of Lore and More. This is episode one, from Gilnean start to when shit fell apart. The brief and crazy history of Gilneas before the roar. And by roar, of course, I mean the worgen bitches. We start after the lame-ass troll wars versus, I mean, the human tribes kicking the crap out of some whacked out trolls war. But before the crazy ass green boys invasion, the kingdom of Arathor was led by my boy King Thordin. King of the Arathi tribe. Now Thoradin is kind of a boss. In fact, he united the tribes of Arathi, Altaraki, and the Tirisfall into Arathar and started the capital city of Strom, which did pave the way for the Worgen capital. But the story of Thoradin and his badassery is a whole nother episode by itself. Anyways, during his reign, things were going great, and I mean great. Later, once boss man Thoradin went ghost mode and died, Arathar split into separate and multiple kingdoms. Damn, they were going big time with that expansionism. To the northwest were the kingdoms of Altarok, Dalaran, and Lordaeron. To the southwest was the nation of sea cruising boat type homies, the Kul'tiran. Well, they were like fishing and shit, I don't know, it's not important right now, so moving on. To the far south, the mighty, and by mighty I mean, better than everyone else as usual, the city of Stormwind. Next. Though still a force to be reckoned with, the nation of Strom now renamed itself to Stromgard. Okay. In the far west is the new nation of Gilneas, led by King Archibald Greymane. Now Gilneas is part of the southwestern Lord Iran areas of the peninsula of Gilneas included the island of Zoldaire, the southern areas of Silver Pine Forest, which did include Amber Mill and Pyrewood Village, and in the southernmost parts of Hillsbrad Foothills, the Azure Lode Mine was also part of Gilneas. Now King Archibald Greymane, he was never in support of any type of alliance. He believed more in self-sufficiency. This new nation developed its own belief structure, customs, and laws. Pretty much, they don't care what happens to everyone else. The king instituted policies such as, don't start none, won't be none, and I'ma do me, you just do you. Now this is the type of we do it all on our own. Under King Greymane, Gilneas was going legit. Gilneas went beast mode and formed a pretty tough military. Under King Archie got balls, I mean Archibald, Gilneas really prospered. At one point, even elevating in badassery to that of those famed Kul Tiran boat homies I mentioned earlier. Once Archibald went ghost mode and died, his son Gin took the mantle and became the king. Now Gin was like his father, he did not support the idea of an alliance, instead in favor of staying out of other people's damn problems. Around the start of the Second War, Gilneas' new leader was the big bad holdup not yet. He's just King Greymane for now. Don't go getting ahead of the story now, people. Anyways. So back to the Second War. So basically, what had happened was, this orc named Gul'dan summoned this big-ass magic green portal out of nowhere in the blasted lands of the Eastern Kingdoms. Now technically, the opening of the Dark Portal was five years ago, but now, some big jocked up green boys from the strange world of Draenor, or what we call Outlands. On the Outlands side of the portal is the Stair of Destiny, 
in Hellfire Peninsula. So these orc boys come out wrecking shit. Oh snap, after a major battle, Stormwind got completely murked. Now the new Horde War Chief, Orgrim Doomhammer, he decided to take all of Azeroth. It's the new orc homeland. At this point, Lord Anduin Lothar, he's the champion of Stormwind. Well, he took the survivors of Stormwind across that great sea and he met with King Terranus. Anduin warned them, man, if we don't come together, we're surely going to lose. This led to the formation of the Alliance of Lordaeron. And at the helm, that was Lord Anduin Lothar, now the Supreme Commander. King Terranus set a meeting with the nations that included Dalaran, Stromgard, Kol Tiris, and Alterac. Not just to plan strategy, but to enlist the help of Gilneas to assist the invasion of the Orcish Horde with its giant green magic-ass dudes. Gin, who was asked for help, thought, Nah, bro, we're good. No one is going to beat down the mighty army of Gilneas. We can defend ourselves. Anyways, this alliance is kind of lame. So, away from me without bullshittery. The Alliance Council was struck over Gin's lack of willingness to help. You mean in our time of need he's going to abandon us? However, Greymane's advisors, Lord Darius Crawley and Lord Vincent Goffrey stepped in and they basically came to mediate. Now Crawley thought joining the Alliance would be a great idea. He thought, hells yeah, we're gonna crew up, send the boys to beat down some orcs. Surely, it will give us mad props of those other nations and help within the Alliance. Now, Godfrey, who was not in favor of the Alliance, thought, Hey, look, bro, my boy Crawley over here is a little too hype. How's about we send, like, a few dudes to show up? They basically are going to do nothing and bounce. Now, Greymane took into account all of this, but he did think to himself, Hey, we ain't in it. This is not our problem. However, he did decide to listen to Godfrey. Just to be some good dudes, we do like Godfrey said and we send a squad, wreck some orcs, or not, whatever. Again, the Alliance requested more assistance, but Greymane honestly gave zero fucks. In fact, not a single fuck was given that day, and those Alliance boys, they were pissed. So the in-depth battle that I will go into on another episode. But just for now, all you really need to know is that even without Gin helping that much, all the Alliance humans were wrecking shit and dropping bombs. The humans sent those green boys packing back through that dark portal. Deuces. Now the real question with Gin Greymane, Lord Darius Crawley, and that Godfrey is, do we remain within this alliance? Now later we find out that Aiden Perenhold, the king of Alterac, was a traitor. He was snitching to Orgrim Doomhammer because he was promised Alterac's safety and a lifetime supply of free tacos. I mean, look, I'll do just about anything for a lifetime supply of free tacos. In fact, he arranged for his peasants to revolt. And this was to cover up the fact that the Horde's mining operations were going on in Tyr's hand. Really? Now that shit furthered Gin's distrust of an alliance. In fact, all Gilneas got for getting involved with this nonsense was a bunch of dead Gilneans from the small force he did send. And the alliance, man, they taxed that ass. They made Gilneas pay up mad loot. They were expected to pay up to rebuild the homes for those uppity ass Stormwind people. Gin thought, we have what? You want us to pay to build Netherguard Keep now? And orc internment camps for those green boys we couldn't get rid of. Say what? Man, Gin was mad pissed, bro. Honestly, Greymane is like WTF, man. I knew these alliance were whack. We are not paying for these camps full of murderous orcs. I vote we kill them all. Merc them. However, the alliance changed, and they decided to follow Terranus Menenthal. He chose to have mercy on these creatures. Now, Gin, he did not like this not one bit. 
Gin's decision was made. Look, man, on behalf of Gilneas, we are out. And he was. Old Gin, he bolted on those alliance chumps. So then Gin had an epiphany. He thought, how about we lock this kingdom up? Boys, he thought, we are building a wall, like a big ass wall, and we are going to separate from these alliance losers. What he did not consider was the amount of gold and labor just to build it. So once they did the books, they did the paperwork, some calculators and stuff, no way can we afford this. And Gen thought, but man, I really, really want this. Wow! Now basically imagine Gen Greymane throwing a temper tantrum that the likes of my seven-year-old Aubrey whenever I take her tablet away. He was not happy. Well, his boy Godfrey comes up with this great idea. Hey, psst, bruh. Why not build it into the natural mountainside? So we don't have to spend near as much. We don't have to do near as much labor. It's a natural wall already. I mean, it will cut like half of our nation out of this. And a lot of people will get locked out of our nation. But, you know, they be aight. Not to mention Godfrey. He really didn't care all that much for those areas because they were controlled by Lord Darius Crawley. And that fool, hey, he's pro-alliance and his ideas are whack. He, his helping, honestly, is what got us into this. So losing those boys, not that big of a deal. So Gen figures, hey, I'll holler at my boy. He'll understand. He's part of the crew and it's for the safety of Gilneas. So now that Godfrey got his way, Gen takes the idea and he goes and he meets with Crawley. Basically, he rolls up and says, see what had happened was, look, we building a wall, right? And most of your lands are gonna be outside of that wall. Um, cool? Crawley took one look again and thought, are you for real, bro? Crawley was pissed. I mean, of course he was. He and Greymane, they were boys, they were friends from like forever and a day ago. And now he just cuts me and my people out? What the hell, man? The people of Pyrewood Village, they were hella angry. They were the ones being outed and this just was not cool. But no matter what they did, no matter how hard they fought, I mean these boys crewed up. They're throwing rocks, they're throwing fights, man they got picket signs and they're doing this. Hey, we matter here. You can't take us out of Gilneas because we are Gilneas. But no matter what they did, that wall was built. Damn. Now at this point, Gin and Crawley, all they had remaining between them was friendship. I mean the little that was left to maintain some tidy little peace. But these dudes outside the wall, rightfully so, they were ready to riot. They were not at all happy about this stupid wall. So basically, with the people of Gilneas about two inches from a civil war, all of a sudden these dead ass scourge dudes roll up like a beast. Man, they're snatching up everything in their path through Lordaeron. This is called the Plague of Undeath, and it was kicking ass, taking names. All the people outside the wall, they were straight up getting murked. While the military is basically being useless, these people, the only thing they can do is go to this wall. So they went from holding picket signs to pitchforks and baseball bats. These scourge dudes are seemingly invincible. I mean, they're getting slaughtered by the dozens. They run up to this wall and they're begging, they're screaming. The military is doing absolutely nothing. And this is on the orders of Gen Greymane himself, because Gen believes if he opens these gates, all of a sudden that scourge is going to come in and they're going to wreck the joint. So I guess it's in the better interest of Gilneas to let a few people go. Damn, that's harsh. And there is absolutely nothing that Crawley can do to help his people. They just get slaughtered one by one. The wall seems impenetrable. Doing its job, the guards remain on the safe side, but just imagine those guards at the gate, chilling out, being lazy as hell, while their own people are getting slaughtered. 
I mean, these people are running to the gate, pleading, begging to be let in. And some punk ass guards are like, guard number one. Hey, did you hear something? Guard number two. Uh, no. People screaming outside. Ah, oh my God. I'm, oh my God, he's eating my face. Guard two's like, look, is this some kind of next shift joke that I'm too almost off the clock to understand? But basically, all Crawley's people got was ghosted. Scourge slaughtered him. Now with the Scourge slaughtering his people unchecked, Gen knows, man, it's only a matter of time before they do breach these walls. And then, the mighty Gilneas could fall. Gen knows he must do something. But what could he do? What could he do to stand up to these monsters outside his gates that are going through people and eating their faces like it's a buffet? He must do something. So he calls upon his archmage, Arugal. Arugal. Arugula. Whatever, I can't pronounce that. He told him that they would not survive if his archmage doesn't help. Now his archmage, he's known as being a little batshit crazy. But at this point, we really have no other choices. So he must come up with a plan. So again, Greymane basically leaves him to it and he says, Look, take a minute, come up with some good ideas, I'm gonna go eat lunch, I'm gonna come back and check on you. So he comes back. Basically, the best plan that Argyll has is a crazy, insane plan to bring in some beasts from another world. Now these beasts that he may be able to summon are thought to be that of night elves playing around with some druidism magic and they got messed up. It did some crazy shit so they got sent to the Emerald Dream for eternal slumber. All of a sudden they turned into monsters. So Gin thought is this really the best idea to bring some crazy monsters from another dimension? But at this point when your boys are getting their faces eaten off, crazy plan, insane plan, it doesn't matter. So he talks to Argyll and he says, look, what do you need? Argyll comes back and says, I'm going to have to go a few places. I'm going to have to do some mad research, but I will get back with you and we will settle this. So basically, they are planning on unleashing these monsters from the Emerald Dream. Now in our next episode, Worgen Galore becomes Gilneas Gets Tor. Now I would like to take a minute to say thank you to everybody who checks out this podcast. Now this is a work in progress and it's a fairly new thing. So thank you for just taking the time from me to you. Corey Adam. Peace out.